when I heard all, all the fans saying before the game that they were nervous, I thought, what are you nervous about? We're in a different era here. Um, Nadam, I mean, did you, you wouldn't have felt, felt nervous. I mean, come on, well, put, put us right on this. No, no, no. I, I understand this sort of trepidation. It's because you've been a City fan for longer than two minutes. So as a consequence, this feeling of it's all going to go wrong, it will never leave your soul, I feel. Like you, it almost feels like you're in a very nice position, Ian, because you can see it for what it is. And what it is, is what happened. But then you even try and figure it out. And under Pep, like we've lost four games against Man United at home. Like that blows my mind because in that time, United have essentially been playing for nothing, yet still they've had our number at that stadium. So there's, there is that sense of like, you know, things are going to go wrong and it's going to be United that make things even worse. But thankfully, you know, as they went out there, like it was, a, for me, it was a beautiful day because you got to see exactly where City are and got to see exactly where United are. And United are like at the point where people are saying they need to literally blow it up and start all over again. And that like is music to my ears because I've got friends who are United fans. And I, like, I'm not too critical of them. I just say, oh, so what do you think went wrong then? And they start going through the list and like, oh yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, yeah. And anything else? Oh yeah, that, yeah, it's a tough situation to be in that, mate. You know, I feel for you guys whilst all the while I'm thinking, I hope this continues for the rest of my life, seriously. <laughs> When you were playing for City, it wasn't quite like this, was it? I mean, well, you think this is how long is this going to carry on for? Do you think? I, genuinely, I, I don't know. And the annoying thing is, like, when United at some point in the future gain momentum, like it will feel, it will feel horrible because they like this is as low as I've seen them in my lifetime. To be honest, like I know I've not been. I'm, I'm 35 years old. I'm sure they've had worse times than this. But the fact that every player is being questioned and by their own fan base and by everybody else as well, it's like, it's like a thing of beauty because that game itself, especially the second half, like you could, we can make all the comparisons about talent, but it wasn't solely about that because there'd be teams who are less talented than United are who would put up a, better, a bigger fight than they did in that second half. So you question the character, you're hearing rumbles about people refusing to play or refusing to travel with the squad. And all the while, like, you've got Man City in pure harmony playing beautiful football and like just destroying United in what felt like third gear. It's a truly beautiful moment to be a Manchester City fan. Let me just say that. I can actually say, which you three can't, that I actually saw City, uh, sorry, United relegated from the top flight in the early 70s. I, and, and, and I'll tell you how much I got the pleasure from that. Um, I had a mate who was a United fan, home and away, uh, and I asked him, <laughs> and I collect programs, I certainly used to do anyway. And I said to him, Will you get me a program from every United away game that you go to? And I collect and I thought, why am I doing this? But I just wanted to have physical evidence that United <laughs> had been relegated. They had played Aston Villa in that season when they were down. So I've got Aston Villa versus Manchester United in the second division, as was. So I can relate to it. And obviously the other thing is that banner that was up at the stretch for the end. Mm. You know, that, that that hurts. Did that hurt you as a player, Nadam? Yeah. yeah, it did, especially because for most of my time at City, like it wasn't like we were just going to just suddenly find a way to win something. But I think, so I was on radio this weekend and all of a sudden all those old quotes that were coming out after the 4-3 where Fergie's like, never in my lifetime, noisy neighbours, all this stuff. Like as far as bad takes go, you know what I mean? That That's a pretty significant one to see where they are now. And for, for him to believe that this was like a false dawn for Man City, like could, people couldn't have got it any more wrong. Like literally couldn't have got it any more wrong. And to, and what happened to them, like, like the rise of City and the fall of Manchester United. I don't know what else I could possibly wish for at this moment in terms of Mancunian football, if that makes sense. Well, we're all obviously on the same page on this one. Um, in terms of how good the performance was by City, and I'll ask the other two lads on the podcast in just a second, um, but I, I certainly don't want to demean City's performance. But do you look at that and think that's what we'll see when Liverpool come to visit in the next Premier League home game? Or were United just bad? Um, I think City at their best are literally like, in my opinion, essentially unplayable. Like if they're all clinical, they're a joke from front to back. But the thing about Liverpool is that they're a bit, they've got more of an identity. So whereas United started with something that was a bit different at the start of the game, and it was working quite well. When things went wrong, they couldn't revert back to anything that's been working because they've been searching for that identity for what feels like two, three years now. Whereas for City, like they played right into their hands, a team that comes and half, press, half presses them. 
what's the point? Like, never in all my years as a professional have I seen a 15 minute spell where somebody had 92% possession. Like it's 11 versus 11 in a derby. At the very least, you just go and be a wrecking ball. Just go and just like clatter someone, get, get into your team and say, this is unacceptable because you're being humiliated. Olays in a Manchester derby, like that's insane. And they were fully justified all lays because all those players in the city team, they knew where they, they knew how to move the ball. They trust each other. Like we're like, even as a fan, you're thinking to yourself, oh, there's a bit of danger here. It's Edison's rolling it to Laporte, rolling it to Stones. But that's part, that's like step one and step two of like a seven step plan to all of a sudden just be running at Man United. And you still sort of think, oh, there's a bit of danger, but they've got total control over it. And I think for Liverpool, if Liverpool are getting battered or something within a game, I think they'll adapt or they'll just get about City and that'll form a different sort of challenge. And in some ways, I guess, from a neutral perspective, I think the fact that the two, diff- the two best teams in the league at the moment play in two completely different ways always makes for it being a good matchup. Whereas the one that, that United tried on the weekend was literally never going to work for longer than about 10, 15 minutes. Very eloquently put. Thank you.